Welcome to Growing in Grace, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ. And now, here's the hosts of Growing in Grace, Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Welcome to Growing in Grace. I'm Mike Kapler along with my friend Joel Brzezinski. Thanks for listening again. It's always great to get together and just talk about God, uh, kind of in a, an unreligious sort of way, very conversational. We're very informal here. And uh, we'll, we'll tell you right up front, man, we don't know everything, but it is fun to talk about the revelation of this uh, this gospel of righteousness that we've been given through Jesus Christ. And Joel, um, here during these hot summer months, uh, you and I, probably sitting inside of some air conditioning here right now, we're, we're in the 90s where we live here in Iowa. Uh, Joel and I work with a, a radio station uh, based out of Waterloo in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It's a contemporary Christian music station, but we both have a, a huge... Uh, similarity, a connection that we've made with each other through the the grace of the gospel, and hopefully we can we can make some new friends out there as as we uh, talk on our program today, Joel. Well, Cap, um, first off, you said it's not like we know everything, but <laughs> there was a time when I did know everything, <laughs> and then I came to know Christ. <laughs> I came to Christ at, at a in my younger twenties. I was at an age where coming out of your teens, where you a person thinks they know it all but you come to know you come to know Jesus Christ you get into bible study you start learning about god the more you learn about god it seems the more you realize you don't know anything and so that's kind of where we're coming from we just you know we 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 study we we love to study we love to talk we love to learn about the grace of god you know god is such a it's so big so huge that we could never claim to know it all so we're just talking we're just uh, we're just here to uh, to talk with each other and and see what we can come up with well and sometimes we may offer a perspective uh not to be overly dogmatic about it you may agree or disagree with it or it might be something that uh we all need to put on the shelf and and look at later on because i I think you know being open-minded is is an important thing when you come to the conclusion that we don't know everything and i was A little bit like you, Joel, except I got saved at a younger age, and as I was growing up in my early 20s and became a a pretty radical young Christian, a a young man, uh, I I had moments where I think I thought I knew quite a bit about the gospel and the Bible and certain doctrines. And as I came more into a teaching of grace, much like what we hear from the, the teachings of Steve McVeigh and others, uh, the more I began to understand the grace of the gospel, the more I began to realize that I didn't know very much. It seemed like the more I was learning, the less I knew. And uh, that's, to, to be honest with you, that was an exciting experience for me. <laughs> yeah, amen, brother. I mean, each, each thing that you learn, each new thing that you learn opens up 20 million other doors. And so, you know, it's uh, learning about Christ, learning about grace, is it, it's really an endless thing. And, you know, um, our human mind's we can hold a lot of information, but I think God is good to us in the way that He doesn't reveal everything to us about Himself. I mean, if if we, you know, if He would do that, we just couldn't contain it. <laughs> well, and when I've fallen into that mindset of learning more and knowing less, I began to realize just the how big God really is. I mean, we all know God is big, and and he, you know, He's. He's all everything. But uh, when you come into that kind of a perspective, you begin to realize it or get the revelation of it even more. So I think we left off uh, last time, Joel, talking about uh, church and uh, not necessarily just church services, but uh, the, the church in general, meaning Christian believers. Sometimes when we say church, people automatically think of a building, and sometimes we're referring to that, sometimes not. But one of the questions that we posed uh, that had been posed to, to us uh, once upon a time uh, from a pastor was if Jesus were alive today here in the, the 21st century and um, in this day and age, if he, were, if he were a man on the earth is what I mean, um, and, and if he were to start a church today, what would that church be like? And that's thought-provoking stuff. We touched on that a little bit last week. And I've done a little bit of thinking about that and, again, come to the place where I, I know less, <laughs> but um, I went uh, out onto the internet and uh, just typed in the phrase, "What would church be like?" You find out uh, uh, there's myriads of opinions out there of what church should be like and what church would be like if if Jesus were running it. But I came up, I think, with more questions than answers. But they're they're good things to think about. And, and a blog that I ran across says, 
what would church be like with less systems and structures and more authentic relationships? What would church be like if if it didn't have to spend so much cash on staff and facilities and could give its resources away easily and quickly? What would church be like if the main service wasn't on Sunday mornings? I saved a good one for you, Cap. What would church be like with really good coffee? <laughs> great green teas, being the coffee lover that you are. He's kidding. I don't like coffee. <laughs> That's a big joke around uh, the radio station we work. Uh, I think, Cap, you're probably the only non-coffee drinker, so I think ra- you're going to get with Yeah, me. I think, Joel, I think radio stations and restaurants should have uh, no coffee sections. <laughs> so what fun would that be? <laughs> but uh, some of these questions, um, you know, it, they're really, I think, worth worth, uh, worth thinking about. Whether you come to a conclusion or not, or, or not, what would church be like if it was about real, authentic community i mean is when we go to church week by week are we going to church are we just going to church to do our duty uh and then leave it we go there sing some songs listen to a sermon and leave does that mean anything to us i mean is is that really what the body of christ is all about yeah and what's with all that standing up and sitting down sometimes i don't get that either <laughs> As, you know exercise is good the Bible says, but you know you need to grow in spiritual things. So, <laughs> and, and some of what we and some of what we touch on here, um, hopefully it won't offend anybody because we don't mean to be offensive, and um, we know that there are some traditions that people hold dear, and we don't mean to make fun of them. But one thing, for example, and and I know it's different in every church, Joel. But when it comes to the uh, this could be a whole program within itself, but I'll just touch on it. Uh, the issue of communion. Um, you just ask the question, you know, sometimes why are we going to church? And is what we're doing there connecting with people? Is it, is it bringing fulfillment? Is, is it changing lives with some of what we do within the church service? And even with communion, I think there are a lot of believers who participate in communion either every week or maybe once a month, but they don't really know why. What's it for? Why are we doing this? And I think even communion, to some extent, in in some of our church services, has been religiousized, and we miss the whole point of it. When you think about what communion, when Jesus instituted communion, so to speak, he, you know, he was sitting down uh, at a meal. I mean, the people he was sitting down at a meal with had no idea that, you know, from that time on, in churches every every week, or in a lot of churches, the first Sunday of the month, or, or whatever, they were going to sit there with a wafer and a cup of grape juice, <laughs> and some churches symbolically break the little wafer and eat it and then and then drink the juice and think nothing of it this was this was a meaningful time to them because jesus was saying this is my body this bread represents my body it's going to be broken for you and from that body my blood is going to flow this wine represents that the blood will be for the forgiveness of sins my body broken as i was just reading in uh, bill gillam's book what God wishes Christians knew about Christianity, the, the body was broken so that our identity could be changed. We were crucified with Christ. Our body was broken with him, and this identity, this new identity in Christ is because of Christ's broken body. But do we do, you know, do we go to church with that in mind, with what Christ has done for us? Hmm. A completed work. You know, uh, and what you said is true. Um, it was a meal. Uh, they didn't just sit down with the one wafer and, and a, and a one-ounce grape juice. They they had a, a feast. And I find it interesting. It seems like uh, wherever Jesus went, they were always eating. Have you ever noticed that? Much like Christians today, I guess. <laughs> but I think sometimes the Lord, in order to make spiritual points, will, will use things that we can relate to in the physical. And, and I think food does that sometimes uh, for people. In this case, talking about communion where people would actually get together and, and, and feast. And, you know, communion, it's, it's, it's a form of, of fellowship. And when you stop and think about it, how many of us really enjoy, now if you live alone, maybe you're used to this, but how many of us really enjoy eating alone? Isn't it much more enjoyable, especially when you go out to eat, isn't it much more enjoyable to have somebody there with you? Yeah, you know, I don't want to go over to uh, you know the the corner restaurant and sit there in the booth and eat by myself. Sometimes it's nice to get away, but when you're in a room full of other people and you're there alone, I don't know. There's just something that's not all that comfortable about it to me. So there's a connection between fellowship and food, 
that, that we call uh, communion when it comes to remembering uh, what the Lord did with his body and, and his blood for our for our redemption right so you know that's that's definitely one thing to keep in mind I mean are, are we doing this thing you know it's just symbolically and not even really knowing what the symbols mean or is this something that the life of Christ his death and resurrection has has really meant something to us in that we're the body of Christ we are you know Christ is the head we are the body and we need each other we we need the fellowship we need to be talking with each other another uh i don't know if it was a blog i found or a website talks about you know what would the you know church be like if if it was a space where we could meaningfully interact with each other and with unbelievers the church now seems like we're waiting for unbelievers to just come to us we're we're thinking we're just going to bring them in, and, and they're going to get saved instead of going out into the community. So not only is it about the church interacting with itself, but it also means going out and interacting meaningfully with people who don't know Christ yet. Mm. And we may have touched on this last week, but the, your pastor's job out there in church land, his job is is not to do all the work of the ministry. I think that's what some people have in mind, that the minister or the pastor should do all the work. The pastor's job is to equip us to, to do the work of the ministry and, and to, to be able to, to bring out some of our gifts and talents. But we're, his job is to, or his or her job is to equip us so that we can go out and, and do what you were just talking about there, Joel. And, and when people come into our four walls, uh, when it comes to our church meetings, um, how are we treating some of these folks? I mean, whether you're in a small church or a big one, how many times do we actually go and try to introduce ourselves to somebody who may be sitting by themselves? They may be a visitor. They may not be. What happens? Here's a sensitive one. What happens if somebody walks in, uh, you know, the, the rough crowd, the, the kind that Jesus used to hang out with? What, what if somebody comes in and, and they're homosexual? Uh, do I think homosexuality is wrong? I, I think the Bible teaches that, it, that it's wrong. But does that mean that we should just shun people and condemn them? Or should we be able to reach out, befriend them, show them the love of Christ, and hopefully teach them a, a gospel of, of grace and righteousness that could change their life in, in, in lots of different ways? Yep, and, you know, growing in this, it, it takes you know it takes a long time. And hopefully, I, I think in, in my life, I used to be more the type that would put my nose in the air and kind of snub people who I didn't think were should be in the church. <laughs> And I think, and I hope that I've grown a lot, especially knowing about the grace of God towards me, knowing that my life has been radically changed because of God's grace and because of nothing that I've done. I want I want other people to know that. Rather than trying to exclude people, I want other people to know that despite what you've done, despite what you do, despite who you think you are, despite anything, you are accepted in in the body of Christ because of what Christ has done for you. It has nothing to do with what I can change in you or what you can change in you. Well, we're out of time for this one, Joel. Um, I'm going to let you wrap things up and give out some contact information, and we hope to see you back again next week here on Growing in Grace. Yeah, we thank you for listening, and you can, uh, if you want to get a, a hold of us, I have a website. It's Grace Roots. That's Grace, R-O-O-T-S, Grace Roots. Org, and you can get a hold of us through there. We thank you for listening, and we'll be back with you next week. You've been listening to Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Baruzaki, a weekly program featuring informal conversation to help with growth in understanding the gospel and to live in the freedom that comes through Jesus Christ.